All righty, everybody. So, hey, uh, my name is Scott Tees. We're here to talk about a really fun topic. Uh, it's AI capturing the lightning without getting burned, and we're pretty fortunate. Uh, I've got a really guest speaker with me today, Mr. Dave Driggers from Cirascale. And Dave and I are going to kind of bat things back and forth a little bit on what's going on with AI. I'm going to talk about some of the upfront themes, and Dave's going to tell you a little about what Cirascale does and the work that they're doing, which is really, really, really interesting stuff. So with AI, um, up until now, you kind of had a choice whether you, could, whether you could go down the AI path or not. There's really no longer a choice. If you're an industry um, that's not taking advantage of some of the AI capabilities, you're going to rapidly get very left behind. It's kind of compulsory that you make an adoption. So that's one of the things we wanted to just mention. Um, the, other, the other thing, you heard a lot of focus today on bringing AI to the data. The reason we're so focused on that is you've heard for a long time that AI has gravity. It most certainly has gravity and is pulling the value of that AI back towards it. No longer in the future will we have to ship all of our data out to some big public cloud somewhere and make use of it. We're going to be able to do it much closer to home, maybe next to our desk, on our desk, at the edge, in a data center, at one of our local partner sites. Um, this whole world is going, to be, is, is going to be hybrid, and that's what we announced today with NVIDIA is this concept of hybrid AI. And it's not just generative. I mean, generative has infused the community with lots and lots of really cool concepts and ideas, and it's going to make AI more attainable. I kind of view generative AI as sort of, it raised the tide of all boats, so that now we're closer to reaching out and grabbing that really powerful AI. Before generative, you had to do a lot of customized programming to get to just this baseline. Now the baseline starts up here with these large language models. We can go and, and go grab that really cool value. And the last thing I just want to talk about was you, we've got to make sure as a community that we're developing and delivering AI in a re very responsible fashion. We're going to talk more about all these things as, as we go through the talk today. Now, um, we see two, two kinds of users out in the world today. One user is embracing this AI and they're racing ahead. Uh, Searscale is one of those great examples of one of those types of customers. They understand AI, they know where it's going, they know how to use it, they have data science professionals. The other side of the world is a group of people that are really nervous about what it means to them. They, they think that hardware is too complex, they don't have a data strategy, they lack AI skills, and they don't understand the downfalls or the pitfalls of you know, delivery of ethical AI. So two, two very distinct groups, and they're, they're each looking for something a little bit different. Um, they could either buy their AI or they could build their AI. And I want to talk about both of these things because it's kind of a perfect segue to introduce my guest speaker here. If you're going to buy AI capability, what you're going to do is you're going to go out and you're going to search for these AI, these AI visionaries that are really changing the marketplace. And this chart was up here, not for you to be able to read it. It was not meant for you to read. It was just to show you how wide this scope of customers are, these, these vendors are. They've all got brilliant IP, really deep knowledge of a specific vertical, but they're names we've never heard of. Um, what we've done is we've gone out and we've called all of the best of the best of these for the verticals that we're focused on, and we've built out entire solutions for retail, for manufacturing, for healthcare, and we've brought together the best of these ISV startups, and we're surrounding those with Lenovo goodness. So you can count on Lenovo to bring that capability to bear. That's one side, we're gonna talk more about that. The other side is, if you're gonna build it yourself, um, Searscale builds it themselves. Um, they can, we can, for them, we just have the broadest portfolio out there. We have 70 different AI products in market today, everything from small little edge devices that are built on Jetson and Atom processors, on up to the biggest of the big things, H100 type products, super dense. So we've got a little bit of everything. No matter which way you go, there's challenges along the way, and you need a really good AI partner to do this. Um, so, what I wanted to talk about was how we brought this stuff together, and it's through a program that we call the AI Innovators. What we've done is we've taken those solution providers that I talked about, all, there's about 50 of them right now. We've taken all of our strategic alliances with Intel and AMD and NVIDIA and Qualcomm and you know, IBM and all these other people. Um, Weka, combine it with the strength of our channel partners all around the world, 30,000 partners out there. We're able to deliver these AI solutions to 180, uh, 180 countries. We've built over 150 of these turnkey solutions. In fact, many of them you're seeing out here on the floor today, 
If you haven't checked out the, the F1 uh, virtual human demo, you got to go check that one out. It is a great example of how we can stitch together various types of AI to create an experience that people are not expecting. Not expecting, and none of that looks to be AI, but it's all embedded inside of there um, across these 50 partners. Now, what's great about Cirascale is they actually act on both sides of this build it and buy it story. For, our, for customers that don't want to own these GPUs and run these models themselves, Cirascale is able to do that for them. So they act as we basically sell hardware into them. On the other side of it, customers that are looking for help and guidance can come to them and help, help guide, get them to guide them along their AI journey. So with no further delay, I'm going to turn it over to Dave and, and let him talk a little bit about uh, what they're working on. There you go, man. Thank you. Hello. So I'm, I rep, I'm here representing Cirascale Cloud Services. We're a boutique cloud provider that really focuses on, on two main types of clients that you've seen up here before, which is well-funded startups that are trying to support and be ISVs for this marketplace, as well as Fortune 500, Global 1000, who are trying to do it themselves, but really would prefer to take it as a cloud service. They're just not finding what they need from the traditional hyperscalers, because hyperscalers are really built for elasticity. They're not built for production. And when you get into AI, that late stage of development and then in production, your systems are always on, as well as they need to be taken care of. And that's where we come in. We focus on trying to look at what the client's biggest issue is, and one of the main areas we find is, is, is how they actually acquire and how do they pay for this, pay for the systems. We've tried to be very flexible there, creating a hybrid scenario where a customer can buy some of the equipment, all the equipment, we then take it and turn it into, turn it into a cloud service for them. We handle all the DevOps, all the infra ops, and it looks, smells, acts like a traditional cloud service, but they've been able to balance how they're actually paying for it. In addition, we can take literally uh, copy and place the same type of hardware that they would be doing on-prem or that they are doing on-prem and then extend it into a cloud service model. The, 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 the key about our company is it's a very simple model in that we do not virtualize. These are bare metal, but we do, they're not traditional bare metal in that we actually work with our clients, work with our software partners, and deliver fully configured solutions, but they're not virtualized. And it's the entire ecosystem. It's not just the servers, it's the networking, it's the storage, it's the user access, it's any of the types of security they need done. And it's a one uh, uh, flat rate billing. There's no aha moment at the end of the month. We architect a solution from day one with upfront pricing and, and a, a, a very clear model that they often we're competing against if they were doing it in-house. None of the new startups want to do this. They're born in the cloud, want to live in the cloud, want to die in the cloud. So it's really easy when we're talking to the ISVs, that giant eye chart that was up there before, many of those types of companies are our biggest customers because they want somebody to handle the IT, they want somebody to come up with also the financing. Sometimes they don't want to use all their cash. You know, the VCs are getting very, very tight with uh, how they're spending their cash and they want to manage that so that if after 12 months of development, they actually own an asset versus if it was just pure cloud and they didn't like nail it in the first 12 months, that's gone. So we offer these types of flexible solutions for them. The billing is flat, everything's predefined up front. And then the next big thing we do is we do focus on this on a true multi-cloud. We know that our cloud doesn't necessarily fit everything somebody's trying to do. Either when they're a development company and they've been developing in a hyperscaler, or if they're a Fortune 500, they're probably heavily invested into cloud already, but not for AI, not for HPC, because this is a lot harder to do and you don't typically find what you want at a hyperscaler. And you're trying to figure out, am I bringing it on-prem or do you find somebody like us who can actually do this for you? We are heavily focused on deep learning. We look at the entire pipeline from not just training, not just inferencing, the entire pipeline of how the users are gonna access the system both during development as well as during production. And this, we're finding this wasn't as big of an issue 
when it took three years, four years to train a model. Nobody was even dreaming of inferencing or how they're gonna run the model when they first started the training. Now that we've got these amazing foundational models that are being released, it seems like about every week, <laughs> you can get from, from an idea to production in six to nine months. So you've really got to start at the very beginning going, what does my inference, what does my model deployment look like? So you can make the right decision on which model we're going to pick up front. And, uh, and so we hold, we hold our customers' hands pretty aggressively when it comes to that, because ultimately training may be one, one and done, or it could be, you, know, you could be retraining occasionally. Inference is forever. Once you start inferencing, that is when, you're, when you really need to understand what does it cost? What does every little bit of it cost? You need to, whereas training, we know what to do for training. Buy a big NVIDIA H100 cluster and you can train a model, no problem. So that's, that's a little bit more straightforward. But once you get to inferencing, everything matters. And this is where our partnership with Lenovo really comes to play. You've seen that they've got tons of technology partners and they're actually embedding software to enhance the technology uh, partner software, their software, getting this, this concept of a, uh, of a personal model plus a corporate model plus a public cloud model is really starting to resonate with our customers who are trying to figure out where is the dividing line of taking one of their products to market. And so we work hand in glove Validating new technologies, you'll see we tend to work with technologies before they come out. We're working with Lenovo to have those platforms that you would be buying also available. The identical platforms will already be validated and ready to go within our cloud. And it's, it's, a, it's a unique partnership in that they also have uh, true, true scale. Yeah. And we're, <laughs> we're like the true, true scale, where, it's, where you get Lenovo platforms their metal fully configured in the cloud, just like you would get on-prem. So we're, we're, it's, it's, a, it's a relationship we're pretty excited about. Lenovo being a global company, we're looking to be able to, serve, to, to really cut in place and do this across the globe. Because inference is gonna follow the sun for many companies. And one of the key things is gonna be able to have identical pricing available in any country you're going into to take this cloud service. So having a global partner to be able to build these, and I don't even want to say cookie cut because they're tailored. We will tailor a solution for the application for the client and then be able to rinse and repeat in virtually any country across the, across the globe. And with inferencing, that's going to matter because everything counts when you're talking inferencing. Cost, power, performance, latency, it all adds up. Training, a whole lot different, big box, go as fast as you can. That's not the case with inferencing. The other thing that was, that was on one of the previous slides is this concept of a POC. We aggressively try to enable POCs. When we work with our customers, we do benchmarking of their applications. If they're looking at new technology, we incorporate that technology to our cloud, and it can be, at, it can be as, exo as exotic as a Cerebrus, you know, what is the world's largest uh, single computer right now to brand new accelerators that are coming from AMD, from Qualcomm, uh, so total up at ends of the spectrum. And we can do that within, our, within a single cloud environment. So you can try across the ecosystem of the, of the different training and, and uh, uh, inference processors, all within a secure environment. We have direct connections into the hyperscalers, so if you're a Fortune 500 who lives there, we can have a private connection into where your data is. So it makes it very easy to get to your data to do a proper POC. Same thing, we do have private links also that go if we're connecting to a client's data center as opposed to if they're in the cloud. We offer these in every one of our data centers and we manage as much of that for our customer as they want. Again, no virtualization, every customer is on their own network and we wind up for, for big companies, they're completely air gapped. We do HIPAA, we do compliancy for, for banks and for federal agencies. So it, it looks, smells, and acts like it's a private cloud, except it's treated as a total, as a, as a normal cloud service that then can be a hybrid cloud, both connecting to other platforms 
as well as, again, what we think is a very innovative feature, which is allowing you to buy the hardware or some or all the hardware and then us turn it into a cloud service for you. Good stuff, man. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. They appreciate it. Hey, so team, Dave just showed kind of that hardware layer that is uh, the foundational bit for Sears. I just wanted to call this one out a little bit because it's one of my favorite platforms. It's the SR675 V3. Um, sports up to eight of these H100 PCI type cards, eight L40s, L40Ss. It's a really uh, unique platform from a, from a GPU density perspective. Not only does it have the density for those GPUs, but it also has all the networking and the storage to balance all that stuff out. As Dave said, right now we are in a, you know, training the big model, training the foundational model bit. The bigger, the bigger um, opportunity here as we go forward, people are going to train, take those models that they get by licensing like a Llama 2 or whatever, and they're going to personalize that large language model and make it a private model for themselves. This type of system, what Dave and the team do, are perfect for helping take customers along that journey. So it's a really exciting time uh, to, to, to be, um, to be in AI. So, um, again, the focus has really got to change. I'm just going to walk through these real quickly. Today, a lot of our customers are using outdated infrastructure. We need to start helping them design AI-optimized infrastructure so that the, when the data is being created, they know how they can extract the value from it. You've got you know, stagnant businesses that are just thinking in the old ways. We want to help them utilize AI to transform the vision for what the retailer of the future looks like, what the manufacturing floor of the future looks like, what the hospital floor of the future looks like. Um, we're going to go from traditional analytics where we're looking in the back mirror, in the, in the rear view mirror, to trying to get cognitive insights about what's going to happen and do better predictive uh, things for the future. And we want to take inefficient resources. People consider IT to be a cost center. We want to convert that into the engine for greater profitability using AI. Um, want to show this last slide. This is the last thing Dave and I have got to show today, but it gives you an idea of the kind of journeys that we're helping enable with Lenovo AI. We've got $2 billion worth of AI revenue in market today. It makes us the number three AI player in, on the globe today from an infrastructure perspective. A lot of that is going into clouds but a lot of that is starting to take place in a lot of the demos you see out here today. Um, we just announced our next infusion of investment. It's another billion dollars over the next few years. A hundred million of that is going gonna, is gonna to go into that partner builder program because we, we really believe that a lot of the innovation is coming from these startups. These startups have brilliant ideas and they know the marketplace incredibly well. They speak the language of that buyer but they don't have the breath, they don't have financing, they don't have hardware, they don't have service personnel. They can't take their story out to everybody. Lenovo can. We want to be their partner of choice. Um, so, if you think about it, 11 of the top 20 quick serve restaurants around the world, most of them are US based, run Lenovo today. 10,000 retail stores are running Lenovo AI today. We enable about 6 million deliveries through package inspection every single day already, and that's growing very quickly. Those innovators that I talked about, there's just over 50 of them in market today, um, running on 80 different platforms. The combination of these two has helped us create 165 different turnkey applications per, uh, across those five main verticals that we're focused on. And what I want to do is give you an idea of what I mean by these different solutions. So when we talk about AI for retail, for instance, it's not just one function. The amount of different AI technologies that go across to modernize that retail floor it's like unbelievable. Customers come into the store, I want to know where they went. I want to know where they spent time. I want to know how long they queued up. I want to know how efficient my employees were for getting them through the line. Um, I, want to, I want to make sure when they're self-checking out that I'm not seeing loss, so I want to do loss prevention. I want to know when a customer doesn't see something on the, on the shelf because their stock is wrong. So inventory management. I want to personalize marketing. So that when I have a VIP customer comes in the store, I can personalize the marketing that shows up on the screen. There's a little bit of that back in the retail solutions demo back there. Imagine having your best clients come in and they get this super personalized experience where they feel like you're marketing to them directly. That is super powerful. Even in the back of the store, inventory management, inventory uh, check-in, arrival. Uh, I mean, imagine how we can, we can supplement what our employees are doing today. And this is not about replacing employees, it's about making our employees more productive, happier, and feel like they're doing a better job. So again, that's not one bit of IP, that's dozens of bits of different IP that we're pulling together from a lot of different companies from these Lenovo AI innovators 
bringing it together and creating those turnkey capabilities. So um, Dave and the team, they're definitely buying AI. They know what they're buying, they know exactly what they need. You saw all the different accelerators that they're able to support, it's really beautiful. A lot of our customers, they're not, they don't think they're buying AI. What they're buying is a new business capability to transform their business. It just happens to be enabled or allowed because of this new AI capability. So we got one or two minutes left. I just wanted to point a few things out. If you can go take a look at these, I'd really be, appreciate it. The, there's a demo right over here of an immersive 3D human. It's an avatar. It was programmed with several different types of AI. It's got natural language processing to understand what you and I tell it when we ask it a question. It has a generative AI model inside of it to help with context and answer questions. It was actually programmed for F1 race this weekend. It's using generative AI to um, control the facial expressions of that avatar so it's reacting properly you know, with sarcasm or whatever it might be. It's using generative AI to program that. So we're stitching together a bunch of different types of AI to create a new experience. But imagine going into a bank, and let's say you go into a, a city bank in France and you don't speak French. You could go talk to that avatar and ask them all kinds of questions about how to get money out, how to change currency, uh, how to open an account, or whatever you might need to do. That, that avatar is gonna be working 24 hours a day. He or she's always gonna be smiling. They're gonna speak multiple languages and they're gonna be programmed with all the context that the bank or the hospital or the hotel wants to have to answer your questions. It's really game changing. So with that, I'll say thank you, Dave, for your time, for joining us today, and thank you all for joining us. We'll be around after if you've got any questions too. Thanks everybody. <laughs>